blockchain is an essential ingredient. It will underpin a lot of aspects that uh, the world will depend on in its day-to-day -day functions. My name is Eugene Zaid. I'm part of Group Strategy at Westpac Banking Corporation, where my team and myself are tasked with trying to understand what are the opportunities for the bank in the digital asset space, where and how should we use the blockchain, and where do we think it can deliver value for our customers. As for the bank itself, it's the oldest bank and indeed the oldest company in Australia. It's 200 years old, um, which by Australian standards is really old. And uh, to understand the bank, the best way perhaps is to look at its purpose, which is to create better futures for our people, our customers, our shareholders and the communities. What we think about blockchain is that it adds a lot of value. And uh, not just by itself, but even more so when you combine it with other technologies, such as digital identities, such as AI, such as data. And that's where we believe it starts to shine. We see blockchain as a hugely innovative technology. But if you think about it, it's not a new technology. It's got its roots in 1980s uh, nested lists, if you are aware of that. And uh, on the other hand, if you think about the new real-time domestic payment systems that we have in Australia, NPP, we have it in some other countries, they are much newer and really exciting pieces of technologies that have been implemented. So comparing to them, blockchain is a real legacy. Now, if we think about the market dynamics, what we feel is that uh, there are pockets of value. But by and large, everyone is still looking for this killer use case. There's some interesting pockets, um, interesting experiments, but I think market is still evolving. So what does it mean for us? What does it mean for our strategy? Is It's actually quite simple. Firstly, we're looking for value. We're looking for genuine customer value proposition where blockchain is the right tool for the job and it can make a difference for our customers. Secondly, we are acutely aware of the risks and blockchain represents new category of operational risks, new things we need to think about and deal with. So what our strategy is about is about finding the right balance between the value proposition for our customers and the risks that we need to manage to keep it safe and secure. What are the use cases? I think this is the core of our job. Uh, where is the value proposition for our customers? What does it mean uh, for our businesses? Where do we need to focus our efforts and, uh, and what we're doing? What's important for us is that we have existing business strategy that defines the areas where we are trying to, uh, trying to win, where we're trying to um, accelerate our journeys. And we view digital assets and the blockchain infrastructure as a supporting uh, tool for them as a way to be able to execute faster. Again, on the existing business strategies, we don't view blockchain strategy, blockchain use cases as a standalone um, thing that we need to um, think about. And uh, from that point of view, whether we're talking about payments, whether we're talking about capital markets, again, we have a well-defined business plan uh, of what we're trying to achieve and uh, how we're trying to get them. There were two aha moments. The first one was about eight years ago when we started our first experiments with the blockchain and uh, we started to understand its potential. But I don't think the environment was right at the time. And uh, the use cases that we considered didn't quite work out as, as expected. The second aha moment was uh, probably after the pilot that we participated in with our Reserve Bank, um, our central bank, um, the pilot of the digital Australian dollar or central bank digital currency that's commonly known, where we and um, one of the other banks partnered with a platform provider, blockchain platform provider in Australian market 
and we traded money market securities. What it showed us is whilst the use case by itself was great and it showed the value of the CBDCs, wholesale CBDCs, it just highlighted how the whole market dynamics needs to change for that to work. From the Australian market's point of view, I think the key challenge is that we're just a small part of the global financial system. And from that point of view, there are two key considerations that I believe we need to deal with. One is the context, global versus local context, and the other is standards. Standards and interoperability, they come together. So if we think about the context, the context in Australia is somewhat different from many other places in the world. We have new, not legacy, domestic real-time payment system called NPP. We have just introduced the new version of digital version of direct debits called Pay2. Uh, there is a well-defined uh, payments roadmap, uh, transformation roadmap that the government published in June this year that talks about uh, decommissioning decks, decommissioning checks, um, further investments into NPP, um, so the last leg uh, AUD payments for incoming cross-border payments. This is all happening, ISA transition, and that creates a somewhat different value proposition in the Australian market from the rest of the world. So the drivers that may be in place in the US, in the UK, or China, or other countries may or may not be the same in Australia. So we need to be very clear what is the value in the Australian market in these local contexts, why are we doing it, what is it for, are there any better ways of solving it. Standards are hugely important. We know that market participants, different countries, different regions will keep progressing at their own pace and they will be solving potentially quite different goals, which is okay. But to enable this journey, to enable all the players move at their own pace and ensure interoperability between what they're doing, they need a standard. Or we all need a standard or a set of standards for that to work. We need a framework that we can all refer back to because without it, we will just build even more silos and we will create so much pain that we will spend a lot of time, a lot of money trying to get out of it. As blockchain is evolving to become a critical piece of infrastructure for the market, for, every, for everyone, we will need to ensure that we apply the same rigor, engineering rigor, technical rigor, risk compliance lenses, as we apply to existing critical infrastructure. So it's not a matter of, hey, let's call that API or connect to that message queue. It's ensuring that we have this end-to-end -end framework, whether we're talking about legacy solutions, or blockchain solutions that all can be managed holistically from one end to another end. We have complete observability, we have complete control, we have a set of controls in place. We have uh, assurance that we know how to deal with um, unhappy paths and uh, events when they happen. Everyone talks about legacy, legacy mainframes, legacy systems. What we would like to call them is it's our proud legacy, not something to be shy about or not to talk about, it's something that runs the bank today. It's something that used to transfer billions and trillions of dollars in transactions every single day. These systems, yes, they may be legacy, they may be around for a while, but they are hardened, they're battle tested, they are solid and reliable. And what we're looking for is to build blockchain-based solutions, to build them up to the same level of resilience and reliability, make them as solid as our proud legacy that we're all reliant on. That's our goal. And perhaps a good analogy uh, that we can use is Marco Polo. Marco Polo was an explorer, traveled the world, and uh, came back from China about 800 years ago and introduced the concept of paper currency into Europe. At that time, it was a major, major, major innovation that changed how the market worked, and uh, it was successfully used for 800 years since. So perhaps now we are 
at the verge of a new innovation where a new digital form of money is mm -hmm. entering the markets and hopefully will make just as, uh, as a profound impact on it as uh, paper money that Marco Polo introduced uh, back in those days.